Painted mirror films. We paint mirrors. For films. Natalie originally just said to me, I want to make a short film. If I remember correctly, we were talking about doing a horror. It had absolutely nothing to do with what ended up being in the final film. Okay, so mimicry is inspired by a piece of ancient Chinese folklore. So it's, I think it's a Chinese myth that says that behind mirrors there is actually like another world. Where reflections are actually just a separate creature entirely. These, these creatures, these entities actually copy you and learn to be you so that they can eventually emerge from this mirror world and take your place. I've never actually written a script before. It's actually quite a difficult process if you haven't done it, if you're not familiar with script writing and the format. So it was definitely a bit of a learning curve. A few months later, it will have been, she just said, hey, could you, you know, have a look at this draft of the script? And I said, yeah, sure. The first time I read the script, I really, really liked it, really liked the idea behind it and could kind of see a little bit of where it was going to go. So because obviously we didn't have the budget to go on location or to hire anywhere, I just design the script around the geography of the house that I was living in at the time. One of the important things about you know independent filmmaking is to work with what you have, especially for a horror film as well, because I think having them set in you know regular everyday locations, it takes people's comfort zone and then removes the comfort from it. I actually got to help out on a lot of the sort of pre-production side of things. Um, like, got to be there for the concept trailer. I think I was just in the kitchen and they were like, hey, we need someone to stand in front of a mirror. And I was like, sure, this sounds great. I love standing in front of mirrors and being on film. Count me in. I heard about the project when I actually saw Nat and Mark post a casting call on Facebook, along with like a concept trailer for the film. And I'm a really big horror fan. I'd actually just come off the back of shooting like my first horror feature. So I was like, oh, another horror project. Definitely want to get involved. So they sent me over like some sides to read for Alice. And I like that it's kind of like a two-hander between two girls as well. And obviously seeing that, you know, Nat's a female director as well, which is quite rare to see in a lot of indie projects. Most of the projects I've worked on, it's been almost entirely male crews and male directors. So I was like, it would be nice to get to work with a woman for a change. But it was quite funny though, because I think I'd just come, come back from a day at uni and they were like, so do you want to maybe you know, play the part of Izzy? And I was like, yes, I'm going to cut my hair next week. And I think Mark just sort of went, how short? And I was like, all of it. I guess that was the, the point where we sort of had conversations and we decided that like we definitely needed to get a wig. You know, I was cutting my hair into a pixie cut and that was very much not the vibe they were hoping to go for uh, for Izzy. It definitely, I think, gave everyone a lot of joy. I think every single person on the, like, the crew and like the cast um, like tried on the wig. But like, for instance, my partner tried it on and we all hated it on sight. It, it somehow worked, but in a terrible way. The table read was really fun because it was the first time that we sort of had all sat down together. It was really nice actually, it was really fun just to get to like go into a kind of blind and just interpret the character the way I wanted to and then see how like Nat and Mark felt about it. Also the table read I think was the first of the photos that me and Izzy took because we needed sort of our, the wall of photos um, in Alice's bedroom. On the first day we met, we were taking selfies as if we'd like gone on like nights out and stuff as the characters. So we were just there like pretending to be like drunk and like taking shots and like getting like dressed up and going on nights out. So it's a, it a fun way to meet someone for the first time. Just completely pretend to be off your head like you've been on a night out. Yeah, I remember there was a vague idea of what we wanted to do for the mimics, but uh, it was mainly kind of Mark and Natalie that were like had like a very specific idea so we kind of wanted something very pale and otherworldly. It, it was really fun for me with the whole makeup process because I'm really into SFX makeup. I do that as like a hobby myself anyway and I've worked on a few different sets so when I knew that I was going to be getting to play like the protagonist and the antagonist and I get to have this whole creepy look I was like yes finally I get I get to look gruesome and disgusting. I've been looking forward to this. I feel like um, the more messy and involved makeup is, the more fun it is. So I was very happy to get my hands dirty. The scar with the staples down it was 
disgusting, in my opinion. Me and Izzy had a lot of fun doing that. It was great, it was a fun time. So it was really fun getting to work with Ash and kind of like collaborating on like different sort of makeup techniques on how we wanted the mimic to look. It was, it was really, really fun. The storyboarding was definitely very helpful when it came to filming certain scenes and obviously I co-storyboarded this film with Mark. It was really good that we got to work together on the on the storyboard for the film because it really let us like distill, you know, the combined vision that we had for it. I don't think we ever even considered that anyone else would be DOP on the film. So when it came to planning the McCree, the one thing that we found in the past slows down every shoot as if you're not prepared enough. So we did chest shoots for every single one of these shoots. Um, I'd go around and we'd get a camera out. Um, we'd start planning all the shots, trying out the lighting. We had to work around filming in a lot of confined spaces. So that's why it was so important beforehand to kind of figure out the lighting and the blocking and all the camera angles. Kieran trapped me in a cupboard during one of the, I think it was one of the lighting tests. Um, I can't specifically comment, we may or may not have locked Nat in a closet during the prep. Um, my lawyer said I can't comment, I'm sorry. Hi, I'm Kieran, award-winning filmmaker and uh, master <laughs> of chemistry. They had to bring in a science expert for this film to really work on the uh, science element of it. This is something called condensation. It's a complex chemical uh, process involving condensation. Four years of degree, 50 grand of tuition fees, this is what it's all about. So we had like the real glass and then the like fake glass that was like strewn all over the floor. Mark doing his little kind of safety speech like, this is a piece of glass. This is a piece of rubber glass. They look the same. Please do not touch any of it. Mimicry, scene 9B, take one. The first day of filming was quite intense. Hectic, very hectic. Chaotic. The first day of filming was really exciting, I think, because everyone was there, lots of energy. I think I've, I've blocked the majority of the first shoot out of my memory. How are you feeling on the first Mark, day? I would suggest if it was like... You learn all of the teething problems, all of the issues very quickly, and we suddenly learned that we had too many cooks. There's a whole other cook in here that I didn't even notice. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe there are a few too many people here. I think I was running around like a headless chicken because I was assistant directing and just trying to keep everyone on task. Just get some room in the garden, please. Yeah. Get away from me! That was the first day that I did the Mimic makeup as well, so it was like literally dropped in the deep end, first shoot, full on Mimic makeup. I think first we filmed all of these sections with Isabella in Mimic makeup. We came back to do all of the stuff with Sonora acting as a, as a body double. We were interchangeably playing Alice and the Mimic. She's a few, few inches shorter than me, but essentially other than that, it was just like, yes, you are my doppelganger. I think before filming started, I mean, Isabella had been like rehearsing uh, like the, the movements we had to take. We had to like do these like arm movements and make sure we were in sync the whole time. And it was quite funny because we did get pizza later on the night. You're a pizza delivery person. The first thing you see is this corridor that's just bathed in this horrible sickly green light. Me and Sonora in the same pajamas and her in the wig. It was like something out of like The Shining. I just remember that um, specific corridor scene and being like, if I saw that in the middle of the night, I would literally shit myself. So the whole thing was quite challenging. We were working in small spaces. We ended up having to squeeze people around to hold the lights in weird places. And I seem to remember I was doing most of the sound from either side of the bed or within, like inside a cupboard. We had at some point uh, me, Nat and Theo stood in the bathtub holding a light just to get that light in the right place. Just some birds in the back. If you don't trust people in a shoot, don't do sound. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've heard everyone breathing, slash, like making mouth noises, slash, whispering things sexily into my ear. So I was a big fan of making things as simple as possible so we could get as much done and really focus on the actors and the performance rather than having to faff about with the technical side. One of the big things is we used a shoulder rig, gave us a bit more freedom in terms of reframing shots, moving shots. And similarly with the lighting, we'd always plan to light for a room. So we'd get one lighting setup that covers the room and that way we're not like having to change the lighting for every single shot. Our oh, no shoot could get started before I'd taped up the windows. Because we were shooting all the time, but most of the film was set at night, 
we had to black out all the windows. There was one instance where, so all the other scenes, the windows had like blinds or curtains in front of them, so we were essentially just keeping the light out. There was no easy access for the bathroom window. So we had to stick it to the outside, um, which was kind of painful because we couldn't get get our fingers through, there wasn't enough of a gap. So I, I remember you just got like a big long pole and we were trying to poke it and I got like a coat hanger and I was trying to sellotape it to the outside of the window. You should, in theory, just be able to pull this string tight, close the window, and then that, that should be secure-ish. It was a big mess. But well, we got it done. And I don't think it fell down. Did it? It didn't. Engineering. Mimicry, behind the scenes, we're all working hard. Coronavirus, COVID-19, non-essential contact with other people. The coronavirus is the biggest threat this country has faced for decades. You must stay at home. On the last shoot that we did before COVID, we didn't realise it was going to be the last shoot we did before COVID. I was really worried. I genuinely had no idea if we were even going to be able to finish the film at all. Couldn't bring anybody into the house. We were getting ready to move out of that house where we'd already filmed 90% of the film. I essentially had to scrub through all the footage that we had and just kind of prioritise in my head, right, what can we film now using body doubles and the wig? And what am I going to have to shoot at a later point when government guidelines will allow us to actually have Isabel come over? It was really lucky that I actually lived with Mark and Nat. That's actually why I did a lot of sort of body doubling. So sort of taking these shots and be like, okay, how can we reshoot this and not show her face? Basically any shot of Alice that you see in the film, if she's not facing the camera, it's probably not Isabella. You put some hair in front of it or like holding something. So there was a lot of sort of creative ideas of how to sort of get, you know, a pickup shot, but have it be me. Today's the day we shoot all of Isabella's inserts without Isabella. Yeah. This is what's happening. We're running so thin on the ground that I've been demoted to a lighting technician. This is an outrage. I think the editing was kind of when we realised just how many pickups we were going to need. And with the rough cut assembled then, that allowed me to really like hone in on the shots that we needed. And because I was behind the camera for a lot of the pickups, that let me really like fine tune the edit because I was shooting specifically for a gap that was in the timeline. I think what I really enjoyed was getting to climb out of a mirror. I'm <laughs> like trying to like climb my way out of it and like still look as creepy as possible without like falling over. Once I had edited the footage together, uh, we began the process of replacing or adding dialogue. I don't know how Izzy and Sonora put up with us just constantly asking them to come back to record like one or two lines of ADR at a time. We had so much difficulty because we have like a really loud fireplace, so if it's windy outside, it's just going We, we somehow managed it in the end. I'm doing a horror it's really important to get sound right. And something that I didn't realize until I started doing it is like how important little sounds are and how hard they are to like record properly. When I was doing Foley, I was basically just smacking shit and like, uh, I don't know, like throwing a hockey stick around or uh, writing some stuff or like, uh, very professional. <laughs> this is fine. There we go. Mimicry has, I think, more VFX shots than any project that we've done as a group before and for that we're talking about all the obvious things like mirrors breaking on their own accord, mimic crawling out of mirrors. Most of the shots where you see a mirror, um, the reflection in that mirror has been composited somehow. For instance there's a shot where we as the audience pass into and through the mirror. That's literally just a dolly shot um, of the camera pushing in on the mirror which we then removed the inside of the mirror and just replaced it with footage from a camera that was just facing the other way. I also got to do some visual effects, which was fun. I've never done visual effects before, but it's quite a cool one. It's where the, the mimic climbs up out of the broken mirror on the floor. And hopefully you won't have noticed that the screens over Izzy's shoulder 
were digitally inserted because by that point I hadn't gotten around to making the elements that were going to appear on those screens. He refused to just put up a Word document or something and said, Kieran, let's put blue screens on and we'll do it in post. Cut to me several months later, just over my computer, trying to frame by frame, track about 20 different shots. And then Mark actually recreated a, a 3D version of the hallway in Blender. He learned Blender like in an afternoon, recreated the hallway, and then added this bird's eye view shot to sort of help demonstrate what was happening in that scene. Seriously? You must have really pissed him off this time. I was still like fine tuning the edit long after I had locked off the edit. I think Chris and Angus must have gotten really frustrated with me while they were trying to score a scene and I was then saying actually I've just made a tiny edit. So sorry guys, uh, I, I, did, I didn't mean to, uh, but I just wanted it to be good. Um, so we began on piano, everything was all laid out on piano first. And then I go away and work on some of the synths to include, because it's it very, it a very synth-heavy soundtrack. A lot of percussion as well to emphasize certain points. And then down the line, more crazy sounds that um, we had to come up with. The song I'm most proud of is probably Alice's Theme, because that was very much the first composition I did. It, it had a massive role in kind of shaping the rest of the soundtrack from then on. Alice's theme is already a very, very lovely sort of innocent theme, but to be able to turn that on its head with synthesizers and interesting sound design to sort of give it a completely different character, sort of upside down, I think really helped fuel that scene. If you do it wrong, you're off the film. <laughs> I'd like to see you try and replace me, bitch! <laughs> We're gonna comp Mark's face into all your shots. <laughs> Take one. I had a great time. All days. I don't think I had a bad time. At all. Tiring, but so much fun. And like, definitely worth it. <laughs> Some mirrors got beat up um, in the process. and They'll never recover, but they were saying terrible things behind the tree's back and we just couldn't let it slide. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, that's cool. I feel like the, the whole process probably aged me about 10 years. It was just really fun. Like, I got to do a lot of stuff with Izzy. She's very talented as well. Nat and Mark were fantastic, and it was a real joy to, like, make that script into a reality with them. I'm really proud of it. I think a lot of hard work went in it from all around. With every cut, it just got better and better, and we were trying to meet that bar every single time. The film looked really good. Uh, the lighting looked looked much better than I expected. I really liked it. Really liked the uh, the pacing as well. There are a lot of shots where I was just kind of like, oh, it was so good. So much effort has gone into this film, and I genuinely think it looks so great. And it's been so much fun getting to work with all these people. Everyone's puts like so much hard work into it, and we've made something that like looks really good. It's incredibly gratifying to sit down and watch the film now, uh, and every single frame of it, I can just, you know, see all the work that's gone into it from everyone. Yeah, I think honestly, considering everything we were up against, we've managed to pull it off really well. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think we did a great job. Action! Ah! Oh, what if I did I miss? That's the wrap! <laughs> <laughs>